such an injustice to be completely innocent of anything wrong. I mean, done nothing wrong, got on the witness stand, told the jury the truth, and yet now finds himself found liable uh, in connection with a wrongful death that he had absolutely nothing to do with. I've never had that happen to me before. I hope it never happens again because it's not a very good feeling of seeing that happen. The fact is, Adam Shack and I is not going to give up. Uh, Adam and his lawyers are going to pursue uh, a very aggressive appeal, and we are completely confident that at the end of the day, this case will be reversed, and Adam Shack and I will be exonerated, and once and for all, it will be behind him. And in fact, I've asked Adam to, uh, if he would, to make a couple comments here today, so I'm going to step aside, but then I'm going to answer questions if you want, Adam. <clears throat> I forgot to say exonerated again. I've already been exonerated once by the police after investigation. Um, I guess one of the charges against me by the plaintiff's attorney was that I choose to live alone in my dwelling. I just want to thank people, close friends from home, people I haven't heard from in decades, people around the courtroom who saw this trial for their texts and calls and best wishes and we thought you were innocent, they knew you were innocent, all that kind of stuff to appreciate each other. The plaintiff's attorney says, claims I live alone, but uh, uh, far from it. So he's going to find that out in our appeal. I feel good about it. I also feel good about the case we just made. I thank Dan. Uh, David Ellsberg, Krista, and the team. Uh, we're, I'm standing tall. I'm not worried about these posers. They got away with something once. They got lucky. They say it's better to be lucky than good. They got lucky one time. I don't think they're going to get lucky again. Uh, so I think we made a good case. So I'm proud of the case we made. If you value evidence, we made a good case. If you don't value evidence, then I guess we're done. Um, I think we more than rose to the standard of guilty until proven reasonably innocent, which is not supposed to be the standard, but it's the one we met. Um, yeah, I was disappointed in the verdict, but uh, I'm still the same person I was in 2011 when this happened, in 2013 when they filed the lawsuit that I thought, well, I just want to turn around and sue for defamation because I don't think you should be able to say something like that in public about somebody. Uh, for 50 bucks or whatever it costs, completely made up. But uh, hopefully it's eventually going to come back to, after a reversal, a defamation suit, a malicious prosecution suit, uh, all stuff like that. But uh, like I said, I'm not worried about it. I'm proud of the case we made. Uh, a lot worse things have happened to a lot better people, so this is nothing to me. I'm uh, disappointed, but I got plenty of fight in me. I got plenty of health. I got married, I got lots of good friends, I got family, and uh, whoever's worried about me, for, you know, family and everything else, is just, this ain't nothing. Appreciate it. Adam, you said you were disappointed, were you shocked? Can you, can you go back up? Sorry. I mean, because... Nothing ever shocks me. Uh, I will, uh, I don't know if you have any questions. Yes. Uh, does anyone have any questions? I'll answer them. Yes, not... how concerned are you that the family still wants to charge Adam criminally, that they want the sheriffs to reopen the case? Well, that is not a concern. Uh, this, you're very lucky here in California. The law enforcement mechanism here, I've been in law enforcement myself. When I saw these four agencies come together, no turf problems, they said we're going to work together, we're going to get to the bottom of this, and we're going to announce the truth. And they were suspicious, as they should be because of the circumstances of her hanging. And they said, there looks like there could be something going on here. They tore it apart. They did more DNA and, and, and forensic evidence than I've seen in any case in America I've been involved in. And they stood up as honest law enforcement people and said, Adam Shack and I did not do it. She committed suicide. So there is there I there's no risk of a criminal prosecution when you have honest, decent people in law enforcement that try to find out the truth, then find out the truth, make a public announcement put their reputations on the line, and they did that here in California, and I found that to be a proud moment in law enforcement because I've had quite a bit of experience in that field, and the fact that the sheriff stood tall yesterday and basically stood up in the face of a jury verdict and said, wait a minute, that's wrong. That's simply wrong. 
there is no evidence that this man did anything whatsoever. And now because a jury verdict comes in, doesn't mean it's going to change the facts or change our approach. So I am not concerned at all because I have great confidence in the, in the law enforcement machinery uh, here in San Diego. There was, a second, there there was a second will, statement put did, out. I guarantee I wouldn't be the least bit worried about it because I wasn't worried about it when it happened. The police did an honest job. After all this happening, I don't know they'll ever do one again, but they did that time and I really appreciated what they did. Uh, at the same time, I was uh, extra cooperative and it came through that just, I didn't do anything and I tried to help them as much as I can and would do so in the future. Uh, but like I said, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen, but if it did, uh, that's fine. Uh, Dan, uh, Dan a to the second happened. statement came out from the Sheriff's Department saying, the first one said we stand by our comprehensive investigation. The second one said we'd be open to look at any new evidence. And to talk to the Zahal family if that's necessary. Can you respond and look over there? Absolutely right. There's absolutely no question. I'm I'm proud of the sheriff's office here, and I'm not from here. I mean, the fact that the sheriff's office said if there's something that happened in this trial that the Zahal family came up with new evidence that we did not know about, please walk into our office and share it with us because we are never going to be closed-minded about this. I think that's what responsible law enforcement should do. I don't think law enforcement should ever close their eyes if there's any new evidence. Now, I happen to know since I sat through a six-week trial, I don't think there's a single, single speck of new evidence that law enforcement did not know about. In fact, a great deal of this trial was part of presenting evidence from law enforcement. But the fact that the sheriff has stood up and invited the Zahal family to walk through the door and to, uh, and to present uh, evidence uh, I thought was an admirable thing on his part, and it, it spoke volumes about the quality of that office. What do you think it was that swayed the jury? Then? You're saying there's no evidence at all. Why do you think the jury reaches verdict? Well, I actually don't know. I mean, I guess that's a question. It's a fair question. Um, I mean, uh, I had someone from the media the other day come up and say to me, you know, I had always believed it was going the other way against you until I heard the evidence. And I changed my mind. And I thought, there's someone that's followed this case for four years that made a decision that what they heard in the courtrooms mattered to them. One of the things I've wanted to have happen is for a, a, a trial to take place and let the media itself, because you're responsible, intelligent, hardworking folks, and you make your own judgments. There was no evidence presented that Adam Shack and I had anything to do with this, with this, uh, this, this death. I mean, none. And I think most people reached that conclusion watching the trial, some of whom thought differently before. Why this jury reached its verdict? We have a jury system. I obviously have no way to know the answer to your question. Keep, it, keep in mind that the workload of the Sheriff's Department is going to increase when this so-called new evidence comes in, which I don't think there'll be any, but I'd welcome any real new evidence. But just like the girl who said she was with me or something that night up on the internet, and that they have to track that down. I was actually even asked about it in my deposition. I'm sure there'll be you know, plenty of that. So they got their work cut out for them, but uh, good luck on the new evidence. Adam, you had to listen to these allegations day in and day out that painted you as a cold-blooded killer. How did this affect you personally? And are you angry about that? Well, by the way, I, I don't necessarily want Adam to be standing up here being pelted with questions, but I talked about that in my closing argument. I was mortified by it. Uh, but no, you go on, Adam. Go ahead. That, look, I talked about that in closing. I didn't appreciate it. Either. I told the jury in closing argument, you want to walk in this man's shoes for the last four and a half years when every person you meet might believe you're a stone cold, depraved killer and it's sexually depraved. That's the allegations. I said, how would you like to walk through his shoes and his life and, and have to face all that? And that's what the great tragedy of this case has been. When the Zahal family admitted on the witness stand that they originally charged three different people with participating in this murder, Adina Shacknai, Nina Romano, and Adam Shacknai, and admitted they had no evidence when they said they did and they manipulated the system. When they admitted that, then came out and then dismissed the other two and then told the jury, told the jury in front of, in this case, the reason we kept Adam in is because we had thought that Dina uh, was the brains of the murder and found out she had nothing to do with it. But then we found out that Adam actually was smart. So we decided to keep him in the case. And I believe that keeping somebody, keeping somebody in a case 
charged with allegations of murder because somebody thought they were smart, that is a gross abuse of the process. What kind of just say about, you know, I've been living with, you know, horrible false accusations. And yeah, they bother me, but I'll say this. The people I come in contact with, be it uh, friends, co-workers, acquaintances, strangers, uh, it's very gratifying to know that I've never come across one who thought for a second that I had anything to do with it. And yeah, it bothers me, but it doesn't bother anybody else because they know me and they see me for what I am. Do you have anything to say? Do you want to say anything now? Because you've been through a lot as well. Oh, so by the way, can I just say, come here, Marge. Here's what happened in this trial. I heard the lawyers get up and say, Adam's a weird guy. Because Adam, Adam had some kind of mysterious girlfriend and they never got married and they didn't socialize with anybody. And so I told Adam, why don't we just bring Mary here? Because maybe you ought to get to know Mary. Mary, by the way, is one of the most normal, decent, <laughs> caring people. She walks into the courtroom and sat there for six weeks. You know, so we're gonna have stereotypes in life. Two people who live how many blocks apart decide not to get married, but enjoy their lives. They had they love Memphis. They socialize in Memphis. They have all kinds of friends. They're as normal as anybody I've ever met in my life, but they decided not to get married, so maybe Adam should be charged with murder. That just doesn't ring true in America to me. And so that's why Mary came here, because and I was going to put Mary on the stand if I could think of something for her to testify to that's relevant, because I knew the jury would love her. And the fact is, she came here and she sat here because I wanted to explode the myth that Adam is some kind of weird guy, when in fact, this man has had the same job for 30 years, he's lived in the same city for 30 years, and he's got about as normal a life as anyone can have, and this whole thing is wrong. Thanks, y'all have a Mary, nice day. Can you just tell us how you're doing? Can you just, I mean, can you just walk up to the mic and tell us how, how, how?